I uh, hope you're all keeping well. Um, this is just going to be a, um, a short video. Um, I posted this image this morning on Instagram, and I got quite a few um, uh, I got quite a few messages on how did I process it. So I'm just going to make a short video, um, just to show you exactly uh, what I did. So this was taken on my recent Lewis and Harris workshop, <clears throat> and basically um, I photographed into uh, direct light. Um, I'll just show you the the actual image. So I think this is the actual image. Yes. So this is the actual file. Um, I've made two copies of it, so I'll just reset the board actually. Um, so that's the original file. Just reset that one. And <clears throat> it's actually it's actually quite an easy blend because you have um, the outline of the house, and you have a bright area here. So it's actually quite easy. It's easier than you think to blend these two images together. So obviously, this is the image uh, exposed for the highlights. Um, I made sure when I took this image that, or when I made the image, that I was using a low ISO, ISO fifty, f nine. Uh, one is the 200 second, one is the 200 shutter speed, and I think the focal length was 22, 22 mil, probably around 18 mil, maybe full frame or something like that, because I'm using medium format. So, what I'm going to do is basically I'm just going to I made a copy, so I'm going to make a brighter exposure and blend the brighter exposure into the darker exposure uh, to create this so um, <clears throat> if i make the brighter exposure so here um, as you can see um, i'm shooting at a low ISO. Yeah, so um what that is shooting at a lower ISO. Yeah, so um you know there is no noise there is absolutely no noise so I highly recommend shooting at a low ISO. Um, if you're shooting into the light like this, exposing for the highlights, expose for the highlights, use a very low ISO for the cleanest possible detail. So I'm just gonna create an exposure for the foreground. So I can take this up to five stops there, look. No problem at all. Um, but we'll just go maybe, we'll go to there. Three and a half. I'm just going to bring back the highlights because that's the area that's going to be tricky to blend. So I bring back the highlights. So technically, I could get the one image out of this, but I find blending I can get a better result. You know, blending two together. So I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity, small bit of texture. I'm just concentrating here now on the foreground. I haven't even touched the shadow detail yet. I'm actually just going to. Okay. At the highlights. Okay, so now we'll go to the sky exposure. We're going to lighten it a small bit. Bring down the highlights. Open the shadows. So now we have them much closer together, and as I say, we're going to put that image. Let me brighten that another bit. <coughs> Highlight the two of them. Right click, edit in Photoshop as layers. Um, no, I use um, masks. I use the TK masks for blending the two images together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the brighter image on the bottom, the darker image on top. I'm going to just hide that for a second and put a mask in there. Now I'm going to select the darker area, I'm going to select the foreground basically. So 
I hope to my panel. I'm not going to go into this now. I'm not going to just go explaining about masks, but basically I want to select the darker tones on the bottom. So the darker tones are to the left. So one, so everything that's white will be selected. So basically it's giving me all the foreground, but it's still kind of bleeding into the sky. If it's gray, it's kind of still selected. If we go to number two. That's much better, much finer selection. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that mask. I do that there. So I'm just going to make the mask a bit cleaner. And by bringing in the black slightly. So now we have a much finer mask, very clean around the house, very clean. So I'm going to hit select. And just go back up and highlight the top, in the top, um, the darker one. So now, if I paint black onto the white mask, it should reveal the house. And that basically is the concept of masks. And that's how we can create that high dynamic range feel. Um, so very clean there. Okay, so a little bit funny here. So I'm just going to select, so deselect. And I'm going to switch back X on the keyboard, lower my opacity. Brush a little bit of that back in. Once we have the finer selection made around the house, we can, you know, just tidy up over here. And sometimes I like to paint back in, maybe at a very low opacity, just a bit of contrast back in. So yeah, there you have it. That's basically how I process that image. That's how I blend the two together. I'm just going to tidy it up now. The blend is made. Right click, flatten image. Um, I'm going to want to get rid of these stray bits of grass. So we use the remove, that's the spot healing. Remove tool, remove tool is great. Just click. It disappears, should do. Do this one. I'm actually using a mouse. I took the rest of that one as well. Okay, so I want to add a little bit more contrast. So again, I go back to my TK9 panel. Um, if anyone wants to know a little bit more about the panel, you can contact me. And um, there's lots of there's lots of tutorials online. It actually comes with tutorials that you can. I think you can actually buy them. But I'll be honest, it took me quite uh, it took me quite a bit of time to get my head around them, and I only used them for bits and pieces. So we're going to add contrast to the blacks. So we'll select the blacks. Ooh, just number two. We'll do a levels on that. And we just add a little bit of contrast. Okay. It's much more punchier. We're going to do, do the same with the mid-tones. So these are the mid-tones. So basically nothing darker, nothing bright. Kind of grays. So we're going to select number three. Because I know this works for me. And we're going to do a levels on that. So if you look at the histogram, it's selected the mid-tones. So there's no blacks or no whites. And again, we're just going to bring in the white point. And this is now is kind of where the magic happens with adding contrast. So it's darkening the foreground. So I might push it that way and bring the black one in. 
enough. You can take up and down the opacity, flatten image. So we're pretty close. Well, oh yeah, it was the cropped it obviously. So we'll crop it because I didn't like. Yeah, I wanted to make more of this guy, so I'm going to crop it three two, I think. That's the format of that one. Yep, crop it three two. Put those an awful lot of the sky there. Keep the house central. Quite simply because I like the fence here and there. Um, I'm going to darken the foreground slightly. gradient just for a bit of contrast and the sky and we might push that as much of it Whites. I'm going to add another one there. And maybe another one just there. So yeah, that's about it. That one's probably a little bit... I think I actually... Yes, what I'm going to do is... Uh, it's a little bit blue. So I'm going to take down the blue. So quite often, um, I would take down one colour and um, make another one more prominent. So here, I'm going to take down the blue take down the blue saturation and I'm gonna put up that's better a little bit of color on the reds and maybe the greens ever so slight does make a difference just taking the blue out of the sky See what difference that made. Slight. Yeah, just takes the blue out of the sky here and brings a bit more warmth in around the house. So, yeah, that's it. Um, that's it. I hope uh, I probably cropped a bit more actually. I did. Still quite a lot over the sky, we'll just crop it another bit. Just goes to prove that you know every image, every anytime you go at an image, they're they're all going to be different. It's a slightly different crop now again. Much bigger there actually. How much? Okay. And then Z. I think I had more of the sky. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um that's basically it. That's kind of how I how I incorporate luminosity masks into my um into my workflow. Uh that's my dog Roxy there now barking in the background. So I think uh, it's time to finish up. Um ah, that's funny. So yeah, that's it. Um you know, so going from going from that, well, I had two images, uh, you know, down to basically where we are there. Going from that, going from those two images, and total reset. And so going from that basically uh, to that as a final image, and as I said, that wouldn't be possible 
unless I had um, not used a low ISO. Um, I take it for granted that the camera I'm using um, has incredible detail and low noise anyway at that, but I would see a difference even, even if I was to use 400 ISO, I would see a huge difference in the noise levels. Um, so I'm always conscious of low ISO uh, when shooting into the light and trying to recover uh, detail. So yeah, thanks for watching.